men should be the SD men. <laughs> Here we go. Boy reviews. Cut to my students falling asleep in class. <laughs> All right, welcome back to the Boring Review channel. We have a special treat for you today. My man Gabe here. He's got a theory that he has not seen yet. Nope. And so this is going to be the first time you hear it about a little bit of X-Men, a whole lot of MCU. Take it away. Okay, so really quickly, you know, I, I'm a huge comic book nerd. I've read a tons of comics. Uh, I follow the cartoons, the animated series. Um... Again, I'm not an authority on comics like uh, the Comic Storian um, or Rob from Comic Explained. Shout out to Rob, your channel's amazing. But um, I follow, I know my stuff. And one of the things that I believe, and this is how one of the burning questions from that that's left from Endgame is where are they going now? We know we're getting a Spider-Man far from home after that. Possibly we're gonna get a. Um, an introduction into Namor the Submariner because they were talking about the underwater earthquakes. We know we're going to get a, pan a Black Panther later on, Doctor Strange 2, but what else? And more importantly, uh, once that Disney deal went down, everybody wants to know the X-Men. I mean, here's the thing. What the MCU has done is take B characters like Iron Man. I'm sorry, but Iron Man was a B character in the, com in the comic books. And you know, made them superstars, made them rock stars. But honestly, when it comes to the MC, when it comes to Marvel, X Men was the biggest title there was. I mean, everybody loved the X Men, and the most popular comic books um, always involved Wolverine. He was actually a part of both the Avengers and the X Men at a time, and awesome. that goes back to my theory as well because you know, in the Marvel universe, the X Men. And the Avengers are pretty much involved in everything. Most of the titles, the spinoffs are the X-Men and the Avengers, with the exception of, of course, Spider-Man and the Fantastic Four. But, um, you know, to make a long story short, the question is, how are they going to introduce the X-Men? Everybody wanted to know. There were theories that during Endgame, that's what was going to happen. Wolverine was going to come and, you know, scene. Oh, everybody was waiting for that post credit scene. Didn't happen. But I think that the Russos... And the MCU, Kevin Feige, already gave us some some morsels, some some uh, uh, let a uh, breadcrumb trail. <laughs> I'm hungry. I want more. <laughs> to 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 what? How they're going to introduce the X Men? Here it goes. The Scarlet Witch is probably one of the most powerful powerful uh, characters in the MCU in Marvel, I should say. And the MCU has did a, has done a smart thing because they mirrored the comic books where her powers initially were very ambiguous and she wasn't really overpowered or superpowered. But as the years went on and the title continued, she was with the Avengers, her powers grew and grew and grew and to the point where then she became one of the most powerful uh, characters, period. This is after she left the Avengers. Um, with that being said, she's responsible for... T for the reboot of Marvel. See, Marvel in the late 90s, early 2000s was going bankrupt, which is why you end up you ended up with, you know, Sony had Spider-Man, Universal had the Hulk, Fox. Fox, oh Fox, got the Fantastic 4 and X -Men. the X-Men and they had to sell off a lot of the properties. And one of the problems was what people are afraid of with movies is an oversaturation of comic books. There were so many titles. There was no way you could follow them all. There were two, three books a week for every single title, multiple titles, multiple universe, world building. It got expensive. Comic books, you know, when I was growing up, were a buck and a quarter. They're three, four bucks now, five bucks. I mean, it, <laughs> when I was growing back up. Back in the day. <laughs> back, my grandfather once told me. Anyway. This man's like seven years old. <laughs> but the point is that what they did was eliminated a lot of their titles and the way they did that was Scarlet Witch was part of both and that's why I said that the X-Men and the Avengers are the two biggest um, and the most important important teams in the Marvel Universe 
First with the Avengers, in Avengers Disassembled, the title, they use her to manipulate Tony Stark, make him think, make people think that he was once again an alcoholic and drunk. His stock of his comp company went down and he could no, lo no, no longer fund the Avengers. He couldn't bankroll them because he's the one in charge of the Avengers. He's the one that bankrolls all their tech and that Avengers mansion. So that was part, you know, in a short a lot more happened, but in a short uh, nutshell, that was Avengers Disassembled. Avengers Disassembled because Tony Stark couldn't bankroll him anymore. So she was a, a, a responsible for whittling down the Avengers roster at that point. And then the X-Men, which re represents everything mutant, she was res responsible for, and it's funny that they say decimation. That was the first clue I had that the Russos or Kevin Feige were going that way because he wanted the snap to be known as the decimation. He kept mentioning decimation. Well, decimation is actually the title of what happens with the Scarlet Witch when she ends half, if not more, of the Marvel Universe uttering three simple words. No more mutants. No more mutants. And... You know, if you guys want to uh, get the comic, it's out there. Uh, if not, Ro uh, Rob on Comics Explained has a really in-depth video about what happens. But basically, her powers grow out of control and to the point where no one can control it. She is essentially wants to change reality and she has the power of doing so by just wishing it. And what happens is by making this perfect universe, she essentially wipes out all mutants. So now Marvel was left with... You know, I think it was 99% of mutants were mutants were eliminated, except for, of course, Wolverine. He survives everything because he's one of the biggest characters. Oh, I wish... I love the claws. That's my impression of Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, now uh, the Avengers are disassembled, so they were able to whittle it down to these few comics, Spider-Man, of course, and their main properties, and they got away from all those other storylines. That's what they did, in essence. Well... Think about what they've done with Scarlet Witch. She started off with this scared little girl that was in this uh, Age, was of like, Ultron. Age of Ultron. She was hiding in a room, and the one Avenger with no powers says, hey, I'm out here fighting robots with a bow and arrow, so you need to get out here. <laughs> and she does. She goes out there, and her confidence grows. Then at the beginning of Civil War, spoiler, it's her fault uh, that the Accords happened because she couldn't control a, a simple explosion, a blast, Throws it up in the air, blows up a building, a whole bunch of people die. Again, not totally her fault, but it shows you she's out of, she doesn't control her powers. She's still learning how to control them. Um, however, by the end of Civil War, or I would say in the middle of Civil War, you see that she's able to control the Vision and throw him through uh, the, the Avengers Mansion all the way to the bottom. Like so a feat that it took some power to do. Okay, fast forward to Infinity War. Infinity War, they kind of relegated to her to a background character until the end in the Battle of Wakanda. One of my favorite lines is, what was she doing up there all that time? What, what, Nick, you do it better than I. <laughs> Why was she up there this whole time? You know, because they're all in the battlefield and they're getting their butts kicked and the these big, huge wheels come in and the Black Panther, everybody starts running. They're like, retreat, retreat. And she comes down and simply takes them and uses them back against the force Thanos forces so the outriders so now we're seeing her power grow more okay and I think that slowly but surely they've been showing us that hey she's an important character her powers are growing because now in Endgame and I even missed this the first time I saw it even the second time I saw it to, to the third time and a conversation with my older brother who's a big comic uh, nerd as well where he's like man you know very few people really got to Thanos. Even without the gauntlet, Thanos is a beast. He's a monster. He took out Tony Stark, Thor, and um, uh, who else was that? Captain America. And they, they t triple teamed him, and they still couldn't handle it. All these people are coming at Thanos, and he's still, you know, holding his own, you know, just uh, uh, holding court on the battlefield. Enter Scarlet Witch. She single-handedly picks him up. She's the first one to break his uh, his uh, double-sided saber that he uses and then takes him up in the air. She's cracking all his armor using her powers and she was going to kill him right there. She was going to end him. And he that was the first time you saw fear in Thanos' eyes and he says, rain fire. And e uh, Ebony Ma tells him, well, our, our troops are... Sire, our troops... Do it! 
do it. He was desperate. He was, uh, he, she's going to kill me. Do it. So he sacrifices his own troops, right? We really see how powerful she is there. And I think that they're going to use her because at the end, there's a short scene there where it's almost like she's talking to the people who have already fallen, the people from uh, the beyond. And the one thing that Thanos says in, 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 is that they failed because they couldn't accept what had happened. I don't think she was able to accept that Vision didn't come back. They didn't mention Vision at all. You know, he didn't get a, a, a send off or a funeral. But when she's sitting by the lake, she says, I think they do. Like she's almost already in her mind uh, uh, thinking these people should be here. And again, that's what happened in a comic book. She thought, well, this should be this way. And her powers warped reality and made it what she wanted it to be. She lost vision. She lost her brother. She lost her parents. I mean, she's lost a lot of the ties that, that she's got we, a lot of people to bring back. She's got a saying. lot of people to bring back. What stops her powers from evolving to that? And I would think that that's the best way for the MCU to introduce the X-Men because by doing that, bringing back her 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 uh, vision, bringing back her brother who in the comic books is a mutant, you know, I believe that what's going to happen is that reality is going to warp and now there's going to be mutants there all along. They could easily change Magneto's origin story from it being in Nazi Germany to Sokovia. You know, he was a refugee from Sokovia, battling, battling wars out there, whatever they want to do. Or maybe they don't take that storyline. But the point is that she has the power in the comic books to end mutants. So she has, a, in my opinion, the uh, power in the movies to make to bring them about to be the the cause for them and i think that marvel the mcu has a, a way of flipping storylines and really you know making you think about what's going to happen which they did with the scrolls scrolls aren't good guys they're bad guys they we Original. all fuck them. you know what did marvel do they flipped the script i think they're going to flip the script instead of her ending all mutants it's going to be her that brings them in because i'll tell you what the one thing that I kept seeing seeing online was, well, they're going to be in a separate universe. They're not going to be connected to this version of the MCU. There's no way that Marvel's going to do that. No way the Marvel MCU's going to do that. Marvel plays by no rules but their own, and that's a good thing. I'll tell you one thing. It would be a mistake for them to have them in separate universes. The one thing, and you mentioned to, me, mentioned to this before, the biggest success, the reason why Endgame is so huge and Infinity War was so huge was because of the 22 movies, the continuity. I couldn't make, beat that argument. That's why it's hard to say, even though I said it, and I'll keep saying it, Endgame is the greatest movie of all time. Part of it was because of the 22 movies. That's the formula, though, that continuity. Biggest argument with the DCEU, no continuity. Okay, so here's my counter argument for that. Having them separate universes allows for extreme convenience but i believe they might want to build the x-men not as separate from the mcu but almost separately because there's so many characters right. fox what did they do right they did professor x correct right. magneto old and young with both those characters and wolverine the rest of the x-men characters they didn't really do too much justice to them right except for maybe um i'm drawing a blank the guy in X Men Two that has the White House scene. Um, oh, uh, Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler. That Nightcrawler. was awesome, but they still didn't flesh out his character too much. I know my older brother; he would love to see some Gambit, right? Some uh, character development for Gambit, and who wouldn't? I would love to see some Cyclops character development. But, anyways, I think there's a lot of validity to your theory. I just think, from a money standpoint, MCU might go the safe route. But so far, with my theories, with MCU, my mind hasn't really worked out too well. So you might be honest on uh, Well, you know, it, you know, it, it remains to be seen what they're going to do. Why reinvent the wheel? The wheel is continuity. The wheel is interconnected universes. If they, maybe they can do whatever they want. I get, at this point, they are, they are printing their own money. But if they do that, I think it'd be a mistake. Again, they have Scarlet Witch, which is a perfect plot device to introduce the X-Men. Use it. Kevin Feige, I know you're watching this video. Use it. <laughs> yeah, right. Several times. <laughs> Could you imagine? Keep but, it. uh. It's rewind. You know, in the comic book, old Steve Rogers, straight out of the comic book, after the House of M storyline, basically she made remade the universe and gave everybody what their wish was. Peter Parker was with Mary Jane, and, uh, you know, everybody knew who was Spider-Man. She was a big 
uh, actress. Um, what else happened? Um, you know, people's greatest desires. Doctor Strange was no longer the Sorcerer Supreme because you know it's too much stress on him. He was just a regular psychiatrist. Everybody had reality change to what their perfect version of their life was would be and steve rogers whole wish was to never uh have been frozen so he that he could stay with peggy carter so he could get married with her so that he could not outlive his friends and he that she she gave him his wish so old steve rogers is right from the house of m storyline so funny that they put it in endgame tell you this guy's on to some but that's just my theory um there's a lot of them out there uh thank you for clicking on the video make anything i know i did most of the talking usually we go back and forth but uh this was um a theory i had explained to nick and again myself being a huge nerd even though i'm not sure at this point i would call myself a nerd because there's a lot of people that are into the mcv and comic books at this point other things make me a nerd not that you know or this right here yes mob the show that makes me a nerd <laughs> but um <laughs> Spending 50 bucks on Mike Trout. Are you kidding me? You know you got to pay for a pick. You buy the video game, and then you still got to pay for those players online. $50? That's cheap, brother. Does your wife know about that? Don't tell her. Oh. Shh. She doesn't but, watch uh, these videos anyways. Yeah. She's not a fan. She doesn't subscribe. <laughs> Speaking of which, make sure you do. Click and subscribe. Click and subscribe. Again, oh. if you have a different theory, please comment below. Um, let me know what your theory is. Let me know if you agree with my theory. Um, Nick, anything else? That's it for me. All right. Till next time, guys. Adios. <laughs> no, it's all good. Get the one.